Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are well. Today's video is gonna be all about my evening routine as a type one diabetic and specifically my evening routine on an insulin pump because there are so many things I do differently for my evening routine now on a pump versus when I was on MDI. So I just wanted to share like an updated evening routine and the steps that I take every evening to make sure that I have as stable as possible blood sugars overnight because overnight blood sugars are so much more important than we understand. Firstly, like and most obviously, having um, unmanaged or irregular overnight blood sugars can really impact our sleep. I personally don't want to be woken up multiple times throughout the night for high or low alarms and I hate waking up low and having to eat and I hate waking up high especially when I was inje on injections and I have to get up and take an injection in the middle of the night it's not a fun experience and can make us really really tired but even more important than that if you think about it our sleep occurs for approximately a third of our time so if our overnight blood sugars are out of range that has a massive knock-on impact on our overall time in target hba1c and just overall diabetes management and how healthy we can be as diabetics but on the flip side of that it does also mean that once you nail those overnights you've already nailed a third of your day and set yourself up for success and to have an easy diabetes day which is what we all want the fact that overnights are so important never occurred to me before i got a libra because when you're just doing finger pricks you see your blood sugar before bed and you see it after bed and that's kind of it even if it's high the whole night all you see is that high in the morning and it's like one reading out of several that you do in the day whereas once you have a libra if you see that you're high all of that time it really puts things into perspective and this is one of the reasons why I think we should all have access to CGMs or flash glucose monitoring. And I had a whole whole video about this because I, I'm really passionate about getting access for CGMs to everyone. So go and check that out if you're um, wondering about CGMs, thinking about getting one and why I think we should all have one. But anyway, that's a whole different topic. So overnights, we all know overnight during the day, 24 seven, one of the most important things as type 1 diabetics is our basal insulin. If our basal insulin isn't right, everything else is going to be wrong and everything else is going to be mismanaged. Because if you go high, you might then have a correction, bolus, but then that sends you shooting straight down because your basal is too high. Or your bolus might even not bring you back in range because your basal is too low. Um, so basal insulin is our foundation and it's something we need to get on top of and your diabetes team should always always teach you how to basal test and take you through a basal test um when you first get diagnosed obviously but equally every time that you change your diabetes management so for example if you're changing the type of insulin that you use if you're going from lantus to leather meal or traceba or if you're doing something like going from injections to an insulin pump, your diabetes team should be taking you through basal testing. If you don't know what basal testing is, it's essentially a period of fasting where you don't eat anything and you also don't take a bolus and you can see where your blood sugar trends when you don't have any other influencing factors affecting it like a bolus or carbohydrates. And then if you go high, you know that your basal isn't, isn't high enough. And if you go low, you know that your basal is too high and you need less basal. Sounds fairly simple. It can be a real faff to do, but it is so, so worth it. And one of the easiest times to basal test is actually for your overnight basal, because all you need to do is stop eating three to four hours before going to bed. Make sure you don't have to take any other boluses in that time. Go to bed in range, and then the basal test is done by the time you wake up. You can see where you've trended and then you can adjust your basal insulin accordingly. And just doing that once or twice can be so valuable to understand exactly how much basal insulin your body needs. It may be that you have to do basal testing a few times for different situations. So for example, I had to basal test on like a training day and then also on a non-training day because my metabolism is very different on both of those days. My body uses carbohydrates very differently on both of those days. So I need to make sure that I have a tailored basal regime for both types of day. You might find that you also have to do something like that on your period. Um, if you have really high blood sugar on your period, you probably wanna do a basal test overnight to make sure that you're not going high um, every single night that you're on your period because that would be hell. Imagine being woken up by a high alarm when you're on your period and you're already not in a good mood. 
it would just ruin your, your entire day. So you really wanna get that basal test done. And then once you've done your basal test, you've got your basal insulin down. It's then up to your day-to-day -day actions to make sure that you've put that basal test to good use and you're gonna be having stable overnight blood sugars. So let's head in to the evening routine. Dinner is in the oven, which I guess it means it's kind of the start of the evening routine. So this is when I start thinking about my overnights and what I can do with my diabetes, ah, diabetes management um, to have as stable as possible sugars overnight. Um, and obviously one of the biggest things that can affect our blood sugars is our bolus, which is formed based on largely an insulin to carb ratio. So it's really, really important that we carb count accurately. So right now I have got some chips in the oven that are just like homemade, like a chopped up potato. Um, and my corn is on the hob, um, and then I've got some chicken. It's a very basic dinner, very simple um, macro profile, um, but I weigh my potatoes. I weigh rice, I weigh pasta, I weigh all of my carbs, I weigh it, so I know that I'm getting as accurate as possible carb count, um, and that's eliminating one factor that could potentially um, cause difficult blood sugars if it's not done properly. If you're new to carb counting, I did a video way 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 back all about my top tips for counting carbs and um, so i'll link it here if that will be useful for you um but make sure to take into account the protein and fat count of your food as well so you get an all over macro profile um especially if you're someone who needs to bolus for proteins and fats um but weighing please 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 weigh and then once you have your carbs obviously the most important thing is your insulin to carb ratio and knowing whether you need a pre-bolus or not and how long of a pre-bolus you need there are loads of different factors that could go into this. Um, obviously your starting blood sugar, as well as what you're gonna be eating and what you're gonna be doing afterwards. But make sure you take that into account. I know it can be difficult when you're like running around the kitchen, not sure what to be doing. Um, it's time for me to turn off my corn now. So I think it's nearly pre-bolus time. But sometimes highs can be caused literally just because of the timing of our insulin rather than the amount of insulin. And on that note, as well as pre-bolusing, you also need to consider do you need to do an extended bolus for any particular reason? You know, I always do my walks after dinner. Um, they're really helpful, firstly, because I always train in the mornings. So by going for a walk after dinner, it's something to keep the activity going over the day um, and kind of give an extra boost to my insulin sensitivity last thing before bed, um, because obviously a lot of the sensitivity will happen in the morning after my training. Equally, it's just nice to get outside I, and it's really, really, really good for my mental health to get out get walking, especially after a stressful day at work and especially after working from home all day. So to do that, I have to do a split bolus and I'll talk you through that as and when I do it. We are about uh, 10 minutes to dinner and time to do my bolus. As you can see, I had quite a high here. Um, that was basically, I came on my period and my hormones did not like it. So I've adjusted my basal and done my bolus to bring myself back down. Um, but it's so annoying because you can see how good things are going all along here and then bam, worked out. And then I didn't know what was going on. Realise obviously what's happening and we're now hopefully on track. Just to run through how I do my bolus for dinner when I have a walk afterwards. So I add in my blood sugar because I'm not on the way down. I'm just going to put in five rather than 5.2. Um, and then I'm putting in the carbs. So obviously chicken is very high protein, um, but I don't account for this now because it will potentially come into play a lot later on because it's a lot more slowly digesting. Um, and also sometimes with a very simple meal, like simple carbs, simple protein, like chicken and potatoes, um, sometimes it just doesn't end up affecting my blood sugar at all. So it's kind of one of those watch and see things. So this is my recommended dose and I always just agree with what my pump says. And then if I find there's recurring issues, then obviously I just go and adjust my insulin to carb ratios. Um, so I do that, but I always do it as an extended bolus because I'm going to be going on my um, walk, which is around 45 minutes after dinner. Um, I extend the dose for an hour and a half because that's um, normally kind of just after I get back from the walk. By the time I've eaten, had my bolus, chilled for a little bit and then gone out. Um, and then how much I do up front will depend on my starting blood sugar as well as the type of meal that I'm having um, in terms of the macro profile as well as uh, what kind of day it is. So is it a training day or is it a rest day? So today is a rest day. Um, 
but I am normally I would do around 17% straight up for a meal with like this where it's very um simple carbs but because I am on the way down I'm only going to have 50% now and I also decided to shorten the pre-bolus time so instead of 10 to 15 minutes it's going to be five to ten minutes before eating it could be um that this isn't enough because i have gone on the conservative side um but because i do do my walk after dinner i prefer to be on the conservative side because if i go low um after dinner then it just make, ha makes me have to delay my walk for longer and i'd rather not have to mess up my routine so i'd rather go a little bit higher knowing that if that does happen i can then just do a bit more of a bolus go on my walk straight away um, and it will come down pretty quickly so i do that and the last thing i do to make sure i don't go too high especially when i've done a conservative bolus like this is i set my al high alarm to seven so that as soon as i start to creep up um i know that my blood sugars are rising and i should be getting on my walk pretty soon or i should adjust my bolus um or something like that so now that it's done i make sure my phone's on loud um, I can get on with dinner. So <laughs> that didn't work. I'm heading low. Um, I think I must have had quite a lot of insulin on board. So I'm going to cancel the rest of my bolus, put on a 0% temp basil, and then head out in my walk probably in half an hour to 45 minutes when this starts to come back up. And then I will um, see how much bolus I had remaining. Um, that hasn't yet gone in, and I will do that dose later on. My um, evening routine has been a bit more spread out this evening because I just ended up on the phone to my best friend for like an hour and a half. So <laughs> it's been a bit of a break. But one thing I think it can be really useful as a tool if you find the evenings and overnights really difficult is having a cutoff point like two to three hours before bed um, when you cut off your eating so you don't eat after that period of time. Just so that then you're going to bed without um, too much insulin on board and you're blood sugars shouldn't be fluctuating too much if you've got your basal set correctly um personally i find i don't really have too much of an issue as long as i don't eat anything that's too slow digesting so basically anything that's too high fat um, and if i do have something that's really high fat like greek yogurt um i just make sure that i have my bolus extended so that i don't go hypo and then end up having a rebound high um but i personally don't have like a cutoff point as long as i have something that is like fairly fast digesting simple carbs so like a hot chocolate or a protein and banana smoothie which incidentally is what i'm going to be having tonight um i'm about to have that i did feel myself going low um as i started to finish my phone call um so i do think i'm going to be on the lower end now um but yeah as you saw in those clips i did end up pausing my bolus for dinner the extended bolus and then having it again on my walk um so i am now 4.1 so just about to go low and um my evening snack is actually a little bit bigger than usual um because i haven't managed to eat as much today as as i normally do because i was very 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 busy at work and didn't manage to snack so like i said it's going to be a protein and banana um smoothie and also um some blueberries so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wear oh god you just fell over um gonna weigh out the blueberries and um, because like i said earlier um weighing carbs is your best friend so that you can eliminate that variable for something that could go wrong so i'm having some blueberries get some nice antioxidants in also obviously it's fruit so not too slowly digesting and then i'm gonna have my protein banana smoothie um i'm not gonna have a pre-bolus because i am um going low i can't get these bananas apart with one hand um yeah i'm not gonna have a pre bolus because i'm going low so i'm gonna um make up this smoothie drop the banana on the floor in the meantime um and then just do the bolus up front whatever the pump suggests for the carbs Okay, so I went um, a bit lower and ended up eating everything. 
um, before doing my bolus. So I'm just gonna put it in now. Um, 35 grams of carbs, 2.32, and I'm gonna have that straight up. About to head to bed, just scanned and 5.1. I will update you in the morning as to how my sugars went overnight. Um, but the very last few things on my diabetes checklist every night are, first of all, I look back at the day, how it's gone, and then make a decision as to whether I want to change my um, insulin profile. So for example, if I um, was meant to be having a training day and then I didn't go to the gym, I might switch to my rest day profile overnight. Um, or if like today, I have come on my period and become a bit more insulin resistant, I would then put on my period um, insulin profile, um, things like that. So I'll think about whether my insulin profile for the last day has been appropriate and whether I want to make any changes before I go to bed. Um, and then also obviously make sure I put my high alarms back up to nine so that I'm not constantly getting woken up um, in the night whenever I go above seven because that's not why I count as high, it's just what I put on during the day to alert me before I get high to avoid myself actually then going high. Um, but yeah, overnight I don't want to be woken up like constantly so I set it back to nine. Um, and then the very last thing I do before I shut my eyes is if I've had a really stressful day, it can really impact my blood sugars and send me high overnight. Um, so in, if I have had a really stressful day like at work, I'll do a quick five to 10 minute meditation before I go to sleep and it just really helps to like quiet in my mind. Um, puts me, firstly, it puts me in a good headspace um, going to bed, helps me get rid of some of the stress from the day. And again, like my after work walk, it's just good for my mental health, but also it can make a massive difference to my overnight blood sugars. I'm talking like the difference between being 16 and five overnight. Um, stress really has quite a big impact on me. Um, so yeah, I literally just go and listen to like a headspace before bed, five to 10 minutes um, thing on YouTube. Um, it's really accessible, really easy. Just stick that on and then drift off to sleep. Normally I'm asleep within like 10 seconds of that ending because I'm luckily a very good sleeper. Clearly it's time for me to go to bed. Um, so yeah, I will sign off here. I hope this has been um, useful to see how I set myself up for a good night of blood sugars and to avoid as many high or low alarms overnight as possible so we can keep getting those good nights.